Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 2020 University of Cambridge Computer Lab Hall of Fame Awards. That's quite a mouthful. So why do we call them the Hall of Fame Awards? Well, the Hall of Fame is a list of companies that we maintain that has been started by past graduates or staff members of the department. It's approaching 300 companies now, and we're quite proud of this because it's an indication of the impact that our really quite young department has on the industry, uh, the, the whole world of technology, and in particular on the Cambridge um, local industry scene. So the awards are organised each year by the Computer Lab Ring, which is the alumni network consisting of all of the graduates and former staff of the Computer Lab. Each year we make four awards. We do an award for the company of the year, the product of the year, the publication of the year amongst the members of uh, the department, and a better future award, which is intended to recognize those who've made perhaps the most significant contribution to humanity through technology this year. The winners of the company of the year and product of the year are selected by luminaries from the computer lab ring itself and Publication of the Year and the Better Future Award are selected by the leadership at the department. Now, normally we make these presentations each year as part of the rings, our alumni group's annual dinner, which is held in a Cambridge college and is a splendid affair. And we have a, a proper handover ceremony for the awards. This year, however, of course, we can't hold that dinner and therefore we can't make the presentations in a traditional way. And so Laura has been in contact with each of the winners and has recorded some brief interviews with them. And this is, I think, in many ways, preferable because at the standard ceremony, you don't really get to find out very much about the organizations and individuals concerned. Whereas here, we can tell you a little bit more about them. And there are short videos, which will be a brief introduction, and then longer videos if you want to find out more. So we'll put links below for the longer ones. Please do take a look at those as well. So now we are delighted to announce the winners for the 2020 Hall of Fame Awards. Congratulations on winning the Cambridge Computer Lab Ring Product of the Year Award for 2020. In, instead of the massive hairball of uh, complexity in current web applications, build web applications with nothing but Python. So that's a UI toolkit in Python in the browser, a drag and drop designer for it, Python code running in the browser, Python code running in the server, one click deployment. It's just, just write some Python and we will take care of the rest. Uh, it's uh, first, uh, the first time we posted it on Reddit, I think, was uh, 2016. Uh, and at this point, we were we were still we were still sort of working a little bit part time on it. Uh, you know, Logical Tuesday had had expanded to to cover about two or three physical days a week, and by that point, I had moved into uh, the office Ian had been occupying for most of a decade in the Rainbow Group. Um, but we still weren't really sure about this until this went on to Reddit and. Basically, the world bit our hand off, and we went, "Oh, oh, I see. This, this, this is a real thing." Um, between uh, since then, we have e had uh, everybody from uh, tiny startups that couldn't, you know, with data scientists who didn't even know HTML and JavaScript, up to companies so large we certainly can't mention them on a uh, video that's going to get broadcast, building every you name know, their their line of business code, their products, their internal utilities, their data analysis uh, with Anvil. Amazing. And so what's next for Anvil? Anything exciting coming soon? Well, we have uh, m more than doubled the size of the team in the last year. So uh, more people using it, uh, making Anvil easier to use uh, and making it bigger, better, faster, stronger. Uh, <laughs> it, one of the wonderful things about uh, working on something like Anvil is that it sort of scratches a lot of itches at once. We get to simultaneously solve interesting, crunchy pieces of computer science problems. 
uh, we you know we hack on Python to JavaScript compilers. Uh, we invent a uh, version control merging for uh, drag and drop editors, which is you know an unsolved problem. And everything from that to the very uh, HCI end of we sit there and we watch people use a programming tool and we identify the places where they stub their toe and then we fix it. And let me tell you, as a programmer who has had strong opinions for many years about the unreasonable complexity and user unfriendliness of the programming environment for the biggest platform on earth, it is deeply satisfying to spot a problem and go, okay, we are just going to solve that. Yes, it is too difficult uh, to store secrets uh, in your applications. You know, the existing systems are extremely baroque and complicated. We are just going to sit down and fix it. And then, you know, go to go next door and chat to people in the security group and see what they think of it and come back and make sure that it's properly fixed. And then it stays fixed. And that is really satisfying. First of all, I guess, congratulations, Luke, on being the winner of the Cambridge Computer Lab Ring Better Future Award for 2020. Thank you so much. Uh, very exciting. How did you first get involved with Africa's Voices? Yeah, so um, um, I first got involved with Africa's Voices actually through my part two project, um, at the lab of all things. Um, so in my part two project was in building um, tools that allowed people, uh, particularly not professional computer scientists, to write um, regular expressions by inference, essentially. So providing a series of examples and allowing them to say, I want these things to be matched and these things not to be matched. Um, at the time, it's it's an interesting kind of problem, research problem in end user programming. Um, but then um, Africa's Voices were trying to work out how to understand a large amount of open text data in languages that don't really have a lot of research in natural language processing. And so they were having to build these pattern libraries themselves. Um, and it looked like um, it might be a really interesting kind of opportunity to deploy a part two project what, five, six years after it was done. Um, so yeah, they they came to the lab via Alan Blackwell, um, and that started a conversation that eventually led to me seeing that they had that there were other opportunities there for uh, deploying technology to make a difference. Brilliant. So tell us a bit about Africa's Voices. Sure. So um, Africa's Voices Foundation is a um, it's a nonprofit organization that was spun out of the Center for Governance and Human Rights in Cambridge. Um, and is now um, very predominantly based in Nairobi, um, working at the moment in Kenya and Somalia. Um, and what we do is curate conversations about topics of interest um, to, um, to the citizens, primarily of East Africa at the moment. Um, and the, we do that by uh, running radio shows on topics that are interesting to them. And um, people text in answers to questions and they're, they're just in free text so they can say whatever they want. Um, and we take that, those, those responses and we understand what it is, the themes of concern, the topics, um, the way in which they're being talked about, what's being said. And we take that back both to run further radio shows to maintain an ongoing conversation over a period of time about issues that matter. Um, and we also take it to, to other actors who can use that understanding to do things in the world, so policymakers, governments, um, UN actors, that kind of group. Um, and so I guess all of this really depends on our ability to build systems that um, allow humans to understand a lot of free text at scale kind of rapidly enough to maintain the conversation and with a precision that's useful for analysis for making for making significant decisions on the basis of. I'm delighted to present the Cambridge Computer Lab Ring Award for Publication of the Year 2020 to the team behind Sensor ID, Sensor Calibration Fingerprinting for Smartphones. Uh, hi, I'm Alistair Beresford. I'm Professor of Computer Security at uh, the University of Cambridge. 
uh, and myself, Stan and Ian have been involved in uh, this research project for, an, uh, for uh, several years. Uh, so hi, I'm Ian Sherratt. Uh, I'm a, I guess it's difficult to say, but I'm mainly an independent uh, consultant working in algorithm development, software development. Um, but a little while ago, I did a really interesting postdoc at the computer lab in Cambridge. Um, and in, in that work, that, that sort of spawned the idea for, for the work that's been done subsequently. It's been a long time in the making, but yeah, that's, that's where it started. Hi, I'm Stan. I'm a PhD student in the computer laboratory, and I'm currently uh, at the end of my third year, and I work with Alistair, and then Alistair introduced me to Ian, who had initially had this uh, wonderful idea about fingerprinting using the uh, factory calibration, and we started collaborating from, uh, from, from then. And yeah, it's been, uh, it's been several years, but yeah, I think, I think we made uh, a good progress so far. Well, congratulations, all three of you, on winning the Publication of the Year Award for 2020. Could you tell us a bit about the work that led to the award? Uh, so in this paper, we looked at the factory calibration behavior of the sensors in a smartphone. And because the manufacturing process is not perfect, the produced sensor typically suffer from various types of errors. And the factory calibration is a standard procedure uh, to uh, correct these errors. And uh, what we have done is that we have proposed an approach to uncover these calibration parameters uh, by simply studying the sensor outputs. And the sensors we have studied include the accelerometer, gyroscope, and the magnetometer. And we found that these calibration parameters are uh, quite unique and our study shows that for iOS devices, we can actually form a global unique fingerprint out of these calibration parameters. And we also found that it's very practical because uh, it takes less than one second to generate and does not change over time. And it can also be used to track users across apps and websites. Because of the privacy uh, implications, we reported the vulnerability to both Apple and Google, and they both fixed it recently. Sadly, there's no interview with DisplayLink, who are this year's winners of Company of the Year. But this is for exciting reasons. Since the award winners were selected, DisplayLink has been acquired by Synaptics in one of the biggest exits for the Cambridge Tech Cluster this year. So unfortunately, I've not been able to arrange a time to talk to them because they've been rather busy. DisplayLink were founded in 2003 and they're a long-standing member of the Hall of Fame. They make software and hardware which allows efficient transmission of display graphics over general purpose networks, such as USB or Wi-Fi. And this allows much more flexible configuration of your display setup than traditional video cabling. So a well-deserving winner of Company of the Year, and we encourage you to check them out online. So thank you very much for joining us for the 2020 Hall of Fame Awards. We're delighted you've been able to, to watch this and go through this with us. And if you are a member of the department or the computer lab ring, our alumni group, then please do think about the nominations for the coming year. We depend on you for these nominations. We want to get uh, the best quality awards we can and not to ignore anybody who might be deserving of them. And if you are a member of the department or have been in the department in the past and you're not yet a member of the ring, please do join us and uh, we'll put the link for that in the notes below. Thank you all. And congratulations to all of the winners.